Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I have a phone out there that I want you to ask me some questions and of course, you know what I'm doing? I'm answering them. Thank you for sending me these questions. I hope you're ready to rock. All right, what is the best way to scale and start a small business without getting into large debt? Really, really great question because the more important part there is not getting into debt. So debt is all depends on what kind of debt. A lot of people don't know. There's good debt and there's bad debt. So that's going to be a whole other question after I give you this one. Is within your means. Sell one product. That's it. And now that's very, very complicated, right? Because you have to set up a store, online, in person. How do you get the product made? You just have to do what's in, you know, your means. Now, I don't want to generalize this, but there's a lot of different industries. Now, if you are trying to sell an app and you need a programmer to make $75,000 worth of, uh, you know, acquisitions of software and time, that's pretty expensive for somebody who's making $30,000 a year. Well, what do you want to do there? Well, maybe you want to go online and start talking about it and see how many people start to respond with positive response and say, yeah, I would like to see it, I would like to see it, I would like to see it. A great example, Bombas is uh, at the point where they've given away 100 million units to those uh, in need. Uh, but the way that they start the business is, the guy, uh, David and Randy, the guys, they had 50,000 people that have been in their Gmail that always oh, had an email somewhere or another. They hit them all up and said, hey, I got an idea. The socks are the number one requested clothing item in the home and shelters. And we want to come out with a really great sock that we also give away to every, okay, to every time people buy them. Well, a good portion of the people in the email said, who the hell are you? Why are you spamming me? So they realized those people weren't interested. Some others said, I'm interested, great idea. Some others said, I'd love to give you money. And a couple of them said, I'm your ex-girlfriend. Why the hell are you emailing? Whatever, that started. So again, it has to be within your means. All right, next question. What's been your favorite product on Shark Tank that you did not invest in? Really, really great question. But the question is, uh, was it my favorite because it created revenue? or it created substantial change, or I use it every day. Well, Ring Doorbell is one that's really amazing. I didn't have the vision for it, and it has not only created great revenue, but substantial change, right? People can, you know, protect their neighborhoods and find out what's going on. Scrub Daddy, the money. I wouldn't make a lot of money. All right, so the next one is, what is one business opportunity that still, till this day, haunts you for missing it? None. I'm really being honest. You don't know that it would have worked or not. I mean, I passed on Uber, but if I would have passed on, not the whole Uber, just even investing in it, but if I would have taken Uber, then that means that I should have said, I should say I would have taken all the ones and I would have been, you know, really, really poor if I put money in every single thing that I've been on. And so it really is, you don't drive forward in life. I don't care what it is, relationships, business, education, you can't move forward driving while looking in the rear view mirror. All right, next one. Do you think you will ever retire? Absolutely not. Because my form of retirement will, I'm an A-type personality like many of you are here, I would retire and then I'd be on a board probably, or 20 boards, one for saving the turtles, the other one taking illegal, illegal firearms off the street, bringing water to people. I don't know how to stop. Interesting fact or stat, I know I'm gonna butcher this, but it's simple Google you can, or ChatGPT, you can look it up. I believe that 30% of uh, people who retire, or maybe it's 70%, I'm not sure, pass away within three years after retiring. Some say it's because they have nothing to live for anymore, and the others say it's a little skewed because maybe they retired because they were unhealthy and they can no longer work. However, I don't like that stat fact regardless. I'm never retiring, I'm always gonna do something that I love. Next one, do you think another urban clothing line can come along and have sustainable success? Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a saying that pioneers get slaughtered and settlers prosper. I'm actually a settler. A lot of the ones before me that paved the way for me, they got slaughtered. They were new, right? If you 
look at it. We're celebrating the 50th year, our 50th anniversary of hip hop. A lot of the people, the cool hearts of the world, they never were able to succeed like the Jay Z's of the world and the Drake's because Jay Z and Drake's are the settlers, the pioneers who risked it all. Obviously, they were groundbreakers, but a lot of them were not able to maximize what was happening because they saw it in the Bronx. It was a very small movement in comparison to it being a global phenomenon. So will there be another urban clothing line? Yes. Now, the question is, what's urban mean? Inner city kids wear it. Black people wear it. Black people make it. Black people, urban kids, they've been making clothes for years. Many of the biggest designers in the world have gotten their talents from immigrants, whether it's people who came over the boat from Russia or Italy or the Caribbean or Africa, because uh, in the immigrant community or lower end communities, tailoring and or making clothes is something that everybody does. Probably half of you, your mother might know how to make clothes. I promise you, your grandmother and grandmother know how to make clothes. So why is it called urban? You don't want to be put in a box, don't put anything else in a box. So, all right, let's see another one here. What's the most slept on money management tip? Oh my God, it sounds like I actually put that question in. I promise you I didn't. It is in compounding interest, how money actually compounds. You know, people think that one day, all of a sudden, I'm gonna get rich and hit the lotto. No, one day is today, putting away $100 a month. Or, man, I know $100 a month could be a lot to people. Well, unless you're out there buying luxury goods and various things you don't need. Remember, your assets are what feeds you, your liabilities are what eats you. And if you put things in this sooner or later, it will pay for you. If you, I believe if you were right now around 18 years old and you put $100 in the bank automatically deducted from your paycheck every month, I think it's worth, I think it was something like $1.6 million by the age of 50. It's called compounding interest. Also, a money management tip, if you don't want to do that, Give me another one. It's the small numbers that hurt you. You see, when interest rates go from seven to nine, that's a massive amount of uh, money that you're losing. Me, I made the same mistake. When I used to go right there, used to be a bank right there, you know, where I'd go. I would go to the check cashing place right before I'd go into the bank because I took the bank with this big institution and, man, I'm only cashing my little check for, uh, you know, $200. So I would go and pay probably three or four percent to get the cash and now pay for money orders and all that stuff. I was giving away around 10% of my entire salary for processing my money when the bank would have done it for free because they want to hold my money as a deposit. So a lot of people don't follow the money. Check cash in place is taking your money and they are charging you interest or charging you a service fee, right? That's how they make their money. A bank is taking everybody's money in the neighborhood, right? They're giving you, let's say, 6% interest on your money. So let's say they're taking $2 million in and they are investing it in something else where they're making 9% interest. That's how it works. When you follow the money, you understand where the need of you to work with people are and where is, what's the most important thing to them? Where do they make, uh, get the value out of? All right, uh, let's see another one. What's the biggest mistake you ever made and what did you learn from that mistake? There is no big mistake. I would say that I made. There are a lot of people that make fatal mistakes in life and things like that. What are things that I wish never happened? Yeah, you know, maybe sacrificing, uh, you know, everything and being out there every day, you know, uh, working like crazy and not being able to be home for in my first marriage. Do I regret it? No, because if I said, oh, well, Damon, look where you got because of it. No, I would have still done that if I was working a Red Lobster or anything else. Any parent here knows that you will put in 24 hours a day to make sure that your kids have exactly what they want or what they need, meaning medicine and education, things of that nature. So can I regret it? No, I don't regret anything, but to be honest, it's made me who I am and anybody again, you can't move forward in life. You're looking back with, you know, I got a shout out Gary V. I remember I was at Gary VCon and I think he said something to the crowd at VCon like, how many people out here, their mothers, their fathers beat them or they did bad things to them and you, they screwed you up for the rest of your life. And some people were like, yeah, they were like, you're idiots. They made sure they fed you. You still alive. Don't blame them because then they got to blame their grandparents. Their grandparents. That's what it is. Don't blame anybody. I hope I've given you some great knowledge. 
make sure you subscribe and comment if you have some more questions.